anything in uh, Surf Manager. Um, there's a lot of people here today. Uh, so we agreed to start with, off with um, one topic that's been bothering at least me for a while, but I think uh, it's bothering others as well. Um, so I posted the link to the issue on the chat. Uh, I mean, it's not that interesting to look at the issue. You could just have a look, but um, it's been there for a while. It's uh, Regarding if you have an, like an operator or another software component uh, that wants to use um, a search manager API, uh, you have to import the, the search manager uh, operator, which contains a lot of dependencies, which adds a lot of dependencies that could be problematic. So um, I know some of you have been working on this and also thinking about it. So, um, I mean, we're here to kind of figure out if we're on the same page regarding the problem, and I think so. Uh, so we just have to come up with uh, some suggestions how to solve it and, and uh, how to move forward. Uh, there has been a suggestion to start in, uh, in Trust Manager, which is a lot smaller uh, project with a very simple API. Um, and it's also not uh, GA yet. So uh, I think we will have more freedom to do some experiments there. So that was the introduction. James, maybe you could say something about the work you have done in this area. Yeah, I mean, I think this is something we've all been wanting for quite a long while. Um, quite frankly, I, I, you know, I think we've had a lot of good discussions on this over months through Slack threads and whatever else on different approaches and trade-offs. And I think ultimately, like, let's go over the things we've got. I think we all agree you want to do this in some form, right? Create a module, slim down things, have different import protections and rules on there, whatever else. I think it kind of some of the open questions on it or the, some of the things that we haven't, you know, all sat down and done exactly this on is um, do we want to go and make this into a separate repository? And if so, um, we're doing, you know, are we going to have a staging robot to publish things and copy Kubernetes in that sense? Um, if we are doing that, that does complicate our release management process as well, because we have to start updating version numbers in our go.mod files in the main project around release time as well. Otherwise, they end out with, you know, in different tags. I guess you have replaced directives, because it's staging. Yeah, the staging approach doesn't have that problem. What does have that problem is if we have a totally separate repo, because we have to then tag in that one first, update the main repo and do it, which is more complex. I'm... I, I totally agree with what you're saying. We want to make this as simple as possible um, for the development side too. And honestly, I I wonder if we can go a step-by-step -step approach and either go, I mean, the simplest one is to actually do what we've done already in other areas, which is to have a sub-module within the main repo to begin with. It doesn't change our developer development flow much. It does like drastically improve it, things for external developers because they can now import stuff. The only addition is that in our release process, we now need to publish an additional tag uh, alongside, which is like whatever PKG slash APIs slash the tag number that we want to do, which isn't particularly intrusive, I don't think, to our release tooling. Um, and I guess the only other question is, does that prevent us changing in future to a staging approach or to a non-staging approach? And I, I also don't think it does stop us doing that. Because that's my only other concern is does it does it make our lives in future harder if we realize something's wrong? So in the interest of like getting the shortest amount of like shortest time to most value, having a submodule to me actually seems like a pretty um convenient and easy solution. That actually I don't think you even need a massive design doc. We basically sit down and create a go.mod file, do some go mod tidying, and uh, mess around with that possibly cl clean up and move around a few functions out of there if we want to reduce the scope of our dependencies from there. Uh, we kind of move on. Um, yeah, please go, Tim. Um, I, yeah, so I like the idea of creating like a module in the repository because if we do this for Cert Manager and for Trust Manager, like 
ultimately you will have like trust manager API, cert manager API, and we create all new repositories for that would be a bit mad, I think, or become a bit mad because we also have like approval policy API then. And, or maybe we combine everything into one repository. It's like cert manager API that has like cert manager, trust manager, approval mm -hmm. policy. Um, but what I think makes sense is to kind of keep it in the same repository because then like it makes sense if you want to change the API that you go to the trust manager repository and change something there and not go to some kind of other repository, change it there. Um, that would be my main argument for doing it in the repository. It's like if you want to change the API, go to trust manager repository and change it there. Um, I, I was kind of surprised because we we did the CMCTL um, Go module proliferation in Cert Manager, and we had to create, like you said, James, a separate um, tag specifically for CMCTL, and we had to version differently. I was initially thinking that we could just use the Cert Manager version as like the tag for CMCTL, but that, that didn't seem to be possible. Like you always have to create a separate tag. Is that correct? Yeah. So I mean, I don't, and I don't want to go too much into the module proliferation. Like too much gone that. I actually think um, a combination of a desire to allow things like go installed with CMCTL um, at a particular tag version that kind of looks normal, uh, and module proliferation, I think, is very painful for users, and uh, well, very painful for us as well, and it's kind of awkward and complex because. You end up, yeah. I don't even know if you could go install it because you're gonna, you need a like a go. It's going to be pointing at a fake version number, right? In the go mod, and replace statements can be ignored unless replace statements are honored for go install. So the whole thing's a bit com com complicated. Uh, I think for this, it's slightly different because we are this is like a library that we're actually importing rather than a binary, so things do change a little bit there. Um, Eric, do you want to go? I don't want to. Okay. I was just wondering, is CMCTL built from the cert manager project at the moment? Yes. Could could that be separated out to a separate project? Uh, yeah. Once we have the APIs available, would that be a cleaner solution? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think the API is really blocking us on that. It's more that like we depend on it in our cert manager release, and that's kind of so it's a bit of a separate issue. I was just kind of referring to that because I was wondering, do we have to tag all the sub modules separately or do we, can we just tag everything with one tag and then use that to import things? So sub modules, if they're all within the same repo, will need their own separate tags. I personally okay. would, um, you know, I, I, I think we talked about it before. Um, I think the module proliferation, having more modules, one for each binary to me, at least I, I I don't think it makes quite so much sense for binary things, but that's not the hill we're here to talk about at the minute. Um, I think for libraries, it's a different ball game, and I actually think it does make a lot more sense. And libraries kind of like the opposite side. Binaries up here, and here's you've got code, and there's your libraries. You know, they're, they're opposite sides of it, and I think that's why it's different. And I think just going back to what you were saying as well about where you go to make changes and should trust manager and the cert manager APIs be co-located together and things like that. I think in a world where we are publishing to external repos, I think, yeah, like it kind of does make sense with cert manager slash API to encompass all of those things. I think part of the reason why the Kubernetes project has that is because, you know, all the APIs that Kubernetes use get published together. And that's because they do have a mono repo for quite a lot of stuff. Um, you can see API extensions API server, however, that has its own APIs directory. And I know there's been discussions around moving the API definitions for that out of API extensions API servers and into cakes.io slash API for similar reasons. You have to depend on a massive tree just to get the custom resource definition like struct. struct. Um, so I guess all of this, for where we are today, with the way we develop with Cert Manager, the way we develop Trust Manager, I think it does make a lot more sense for us to have sub-modules in the repo, so long as, and especially considering, you know, time to value, I think, is less, so long as we're not backing ourselves into a corner, because that's really the crux of it. We'll probably learn 
like we did with CMCTL, something else that's really annoying about doing it this way. I know, I know one of them, one of them can be like as Git repos grow in size, your submodule could be affected by the size of its parent repo and stuff like that. We haven't hit that scaling issue yet. Uh, so as long as we're not doing something that stops us changing this decision, um, and especially if the effort's low, I, I, I'm pretty in favor of it and making cert manager slash PKG slash APIs, whatever path we end up wanting um, different. And yeah, I think the tagging thing is something, but this is actually a different type of tagging <laughs> um, in a way. I imagine it could even be tagging and rewriting needed for CMCTL, whereas this would just be a straight tag. Um, we do this actually, sorry, I'll, very quickly. One thing we actually do a similar thing for a fork of Kubernetes internally to avoid having to run the staging and the publishing bot, we actually do have tags for like staging slash source slash case.io slash cube scheduler slash the version number of our internal version number. That other other thing that we have scheduler extensions and stuff can then import that. So we kind of we are we have done this submodule stuff ourselves in order to avoid needing to run a publishing bot ourselves too. Um, and that's been relatively, I mean, that's hasn't come back to bite me yet, so. So the proposal I think, um, can Sorry. I just, I think, I think, I think you might, we might be talking across purposes because you can go install CMCTL because we've added the path prefix tags to yeah. the release process. Yeah, no, what I'm saying is that we needed to add those so that you could go install them. Yeah. And isn't the, isn't this path prefix tag? It's kind of a hack, isn't it? Just so that there is a URL available for go get to find the module. It's a, an officially supported thing. Um, depends on your definition of hack, but it's a hack that Go team endorse. All right. Well, I didn't mean a hack, but isn't it? It's like it's a way for go get to find the go. Um, for the, for the UR, it's a way to make the URL that Go get expects work on GitHub. Well, maybe I've misunderstood. I don't think it's specifically, yeah. Like this is a standard for how you tag submodules within a repository of any sort, because Go does support things other than Git, like you can do Mercurial and SVN and stuff, and these same rules apply. It's not GitHub, I don't think, because it doesn't use URLs. This actually goes via the um, Go module proxy. Um, Which like, in turn goes to GitHub, though. It could go to GitHub, or it could go to GitLab, or it go to. A, there's not a standard for like zip file URLs or anything like that. It's cloning a repo and it's doing something. Yeah. Okay, well, I might be wrong about that, but um, I, I, the other thing I was going to say is what goes into the um, API package. Will it include only the structs, or will it include like the validation functions? The defaulting functions. If I don't, I don't think there are any defaulting functions. But in the past, when I've imported Kubernetes APIs, I've noticed some of them include the validation functions and some of them don't. And I've always wanted them to include the validation functions. But I am personally, I don't think we should include validation, defaulting, or anything. I think we should be structured. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought that told me I'm muted. It doesn't keep it raised. Um, yeah, I think it should just be the structs. Um, and the reason for, I think the reason the places we've seen this in Kubernetes, one of them is API extensions, API server, because mm. it doesn't have a staging thing of its own. So you actually got those co-located along and it is useful um, at points, but ultimately the mantra in Kate's IO slash API is that you shouldn't need them because those are API server concerns. And also being able to execute them might be context dependent. Like you could have additional webhooks in your cluster for validation. You could have this, that, the other. Mm -hmm. I think, and we're not preventing people importing our validations and defaults. They can do it if they were to import the cert manager repo and set up correct replace directives, similar to what you can do with Kubernetes actually. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I, I I'd, agree. I'd, I'd also say it's easier for us to start not doing that and then especially as these con like if more use cases come up that actually are quite compelling you know i think we can revisit the, uh, the validation functions are already anyway in the in, in an internal package so i i don't think they're even even there in the public um, yeah and that's and i think 
I think I might have done that at some point, and that was intentional. If that is becoming problematic, I would certainly be open to, you know, discussing non-internal. Internal, I have you know, a lot of opinions on whether yeah. it's a general ecosystem. And, sorry. You, you, we have the validation, open API validation. That is still, like, defined, and source of truth is still next to the struct or in the struct basically as a comment so there is a bit of a weird situation there but i, I remember that i read somewhere that it, there's like two types of validation there's like validation that can be done purely on the resource itself and then there's validation that needs like other stuff like resource uh, like a cluster state for example or any kind of controller state and I feel like all the validation that's just purely can be just purely on the resource itself is okay to be put close to the definitions. Yeah. I was just going to say my, my opinion on like what the source of truth is, is whilst we do include those comments, actually how those comments are interpreted and what they output is a function of the core cert manager project and our decision. We choose to use controller gen which happens to not suffix every regex you write with a, an additional load of rubbish or something like that. Um, so I, I don't think this, I, I think as part of this, we should emphasize ultimately the source of truth of validation is an API server. Uh, I mean, you could say the CRD's open API schema alone, but really, whilst, especially whilst we have webhooks doing additional further validation, it's an API server running with a webhook installed and things like that. Um, and I, I don't, I think we should be careful not to try and change that too much with the move to the API. The API to me is just for struct definitions. Um, but I think we should still allow the markers to be part of the structs, of course, because it will make it a lot more complicated if we remove that. So there will yeah. be some validation there, but but it will be more like comments in, in that context. Well, and where that actually becomes useful is if someone embeds one of our structures into their own type. And this is something we see with like core Kubernetes types from our types. You know, it's nice when they have started adding validation markers or defaulting markers because we can generate ourselves. And that is something I think we should support. And that's that that makes sense. I think it's more just like the official wording. Like that that's useful for resource validation. It should be a motivation for us to move more into like CEL based things, you know, stuff like controller gen works and less in webhooks. Uh, but yeah, it's best effort, is, I guess is what I'm saying. There is no, there isn't the source of truth for a complete full validation um, because there are things that require runtime ups, even in an ideal world in a few years' time. Do we um, also publish the, like the ACME APIs, the orders and the challenges, which are at the moment, they're just a cert manager internal implementation detail. Do we do we want to uh, encourage people to to use those APIs directly or discourage it? One awkward thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good question. Challenge and order as a type. There are a few shared things because issuers embed some Acme configuration stuff. Mm. Can't remember. Um, we could swap the relationship because these are substructures, so we're not moving things between groups. There is a relationship, I think, I'm hoping now, it was from Acme to the core group, um, where the Acme, yeah, but I think it might be the other way around. Uh, but yeah, it's a good question. Why, why, why wouldn't we publish the Acme one? It is part of our V1 API. It's something we've committed to support for a long time. So I think, yes, it should go in there based on that, personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a nice thought, but we did expose it as an API. Um, no, that's a, that's a good argument, yeah, yeah. I mean, the core issuer API is also not that really, that's beautiful or that it's like a bunch of configuration stuff. Yeah, and uh, we've talked long time back about breaking that out it's just you know it, it is a v1 api now um i think at the time when we were talking about v1 the project had become so kind of de facto v1 anyway that we were sort of bound by that um yes i agree but we this is why api design early on is a really good idea it's a 
we can learn from this because <laughs> we've committed to it um, for now. The other thing, one thing we discussed just this week in Venify is um, like, so I, I was all for using the nested go mod technique for the for the reasons we've just discussed but then um and it's not it's not really relevant to, it's not relevant to that manager but if you had a closed source controller and you want to make the api structs publicly available then on the face of it copying them to a separate repo makes more sense in that case Unless there is a way, that. unless there is a way, when you have when you using the sub module sub module approach, and still copying it to a, a separate repo, I would I would move it because that makes it easier, right? Move all the APIs into a public repository, and then import it in your private repository. Because otherwise, if you copy, then like we talked about, it's like then you have to basically rewrite everything and. If you have a library that uses that struct, mm. then the library has to accept, uh, like it's not clear, like has it, does it have to accept the public type or does it have to accept the internal type? If that makes sense. Well, yeah, sorry. Anyway, it doesn't matter that we could, we can do it a different way for the, for those projects internally if we need to. Yes. And I have one more remark and that that's like something James um, lightly mentioned is this Git thing, right? If you have a, your module as a subfolder of your Git repository, then I think every time that you use that module, it will pull in the whole Git. Is that correct? Not if you go via the Go module proxy, which you do by default in New oh, Go. Okay. So that, that actually does still is what this is one of the reasons why they created it um yeah the go module proxy itself is obviously at some point going to have to clone our repo to do that um yeah i don't think we are the largest repo with this problem though i think there are others out there bigger than us um so yeah i don't think we're actually that large either to be honest mm -hmm. did you still find a uh, final solution to this because that was um Richard, who registered an issue on, on Istio to get the APIs, but did, that's still unresolved? Uh, I think so, yeah, because I'd forgotten about that until you reminded me the other day. I think it's not, they haven't addressed this yet. Yeah, it's a very common problem. And we also have this problem internally between our uh, operator project, closed source. So what does the what strictly the the, the value um, the, the the field inside the Go module file called module? What does that have to contain? I mean, could you in a in a nested Go mod file could you use a totally different URL there? Like, uh, could it be like set manager IO slash API? Yes, but you'd still need to then refer to it. You need to somehow set up the redirects to do that. So look at Kate's IO. Mm. Kate's.io points to GitHub. Um, oh, sorry, my that's my next call. Uh, Kate's.io refers to GitHub, and that requires a little bit extra work. But yes, it is possible. You need a web server that responds with location headers, I think, um, in order to do that. So you'd need GitHub to respond with location headers. So you wouldn't be able to turn github.com slash Richard slash API into something else, but yeah. But could you sort of get rid of the could you make it appear like it wasn't in a, in a subfolder if we created cert manager.io slash api yes mm, okay otherwise if, it will complain that it's, it says like you import it as and it yeah. is defined as something else so you have to the part that you use to import has to match what's in the go module file yeah so if we go and register our own domain name which we have and then set up a load of import like paths then yes we could make it prettier again I, I will have to drop. Um, my general thing here is that I think it makes sense to do the thing, the path of least resistance. It doesn't, doesn't hurt us. And my gut it feel is that actually a, a sub module kind of serves that purpose. Um, I think a move to, uh, you know, there's possibly we can talk about either staging or actually changing the authoritative source. Looking at Istio, actually, I think they have moved their authoritative 
authoritative source to to the API uh, repository. They've got STO slash API and it's telling me to create PRs against it. So they might have just, you know, bit in the bullet there and they then go and do the risk management side of things. And that might be something. That's interesting. Do we know uh, if this will be breaking for Go users that uh, currently import uh, our project? Probably when, will. When they come to upgrade their dependency, uh, it will tell them it will be breaking in that they'll have to make a few extra changes in their Go mod. Say that someone's importing what becomes Cert Manager and Cert Manager slash API, well, PKG APIs, they will need to add a replace statement in there too. So, yes, it's breaking in that. They can't just do a silent version bump upgrade and it's all good. Um, but yeah. Uh, can I ask one question before you go, James? Can we not just not have a replace statement in the roots and update the roots to refer to the latest version of the API? No, we can't. Because if you don't have a replace statement, I tell you, and I tell you what happens if you do that, master of cert manager might refer to mark, mark like master minus five of cert manager slash api and everyone's like why does this not work and it's because your like golang tooling when you do a go build is actually going and fetching the, the two-day old version and not using your local copy so no you, we have to have a replace statement um if we were to put it in yeah no but the two two-day old version would also work i feel like well, not, what's I think it's wrong anyway. Yeah, it's confusing. Yeah. I think I think we are tricking people, and I think in terms of making the developer experience better, I don't think it is. Adding a replace statement is something people are getting used to when it comes to importing repos with multiple submodules. It's one of the trade-offs. Um, I, I, I think most most users will actually uh, change to importing the API uh, submodule instead of the cert manager. So. Uh, and there will probably be advanced users if they import the cert manager and still want to do that. I, I would just say, and this is my final thing, if we were to put some kind of default in there and best effort, keep it up to date as and when, um, I can already feel the headaches from internal teams that depend on cert manager things getting confused um, personally. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'll leave it there because um, I do need to go. But right. thank you. Thanks much. for joining, James. Not so sorry. Nice to see James. I'll see you soon. Bye. Uh, before we end this uh, this thing, uh, how do we progress? Do we have any action points? Well, I don't know. I found that last comment kind of <laughs> kind of disturbing because now we will break everyone who imports cert manager, right? Like we said, I. I I didn't think of the solution that way. I thought we would version it differently and then just refer to an older version like we do for CMCTL, basically. Um, so having the replace statement in the root kind of makes me tilt towards having a separate repository more. But why do you think so? Do you think users will actually uh, still want to import uh hold the full set manager and not switching to just the API so module yeah because we have um, package util PKI but uh, that could be I mean we have uh, like a util type of modules internally for that reason to be able to reuse it across multiple operators is kind of a utilities which suddenly changed because it's very stable code. So I would suggest that instead of making a problem out of the replace uh, thing that you're. So what are you saying? Not to not import the util stuff? Anymore? No, to, to kind of extract the util stuff into a separate project. And then you can import it like uh, both in cert manager and in other project that needs the same utilities. But then you can also just export the API into a separate project. <laughs> I don't know. Now I, I feel like I'm either at least confusing things in, in both. Like, 
I think the, 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 the top level go file currently has a comment that says, please place any replace statements here at the top for visibility. Do not remove this comment. It's like it's inviting people to put replace statements there. Yeah, but that's all right. As long as these replace statements, like, as long as there is like a default version, then you can still import it. Otherwise, if you import cert manager, you'll, you'll have to specify a replace statement for the API. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay, I'm out of my depth. So I forgot. That's, yeah, that's like that's this whole pain of replacements. Yeah. You have oh. like this weird version number with all these zeros and ones. Yeah, exactly. If you have that, then it has to be replaced. I think that's what the proposal currently. Peter I, and Adrian have got their hands up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it sounds like there's a bit more to discuss on this. And I try to write notes and I'm honestly, I'm not, I'm not quite following. So they might not make sense, but it sounds like either we agree what the principle should be. It sounds like whatever is e whatever is best for developers, whether that's the easiest thing or not is a question. Or we have like a reference example somewhere of like, if we do it this way, it looks like this. If we do it that way, it looks like that. And then we pick one or the other sort of thing. That might be the best way to, to try it on a mock, basically, rather than or hmm. on try it on trust management try both ways and see what works best adrian yeah i don't know if i'm missing the point but surely developers that import certain manager are only broken at the point where they try to upgrade their import i'm looking for someone to like nod their head or disagree with me violently Say it again, Adrian. I, I Is that sure, surely it. developers are only surely developers who are importing cert manager would only would only have their builds broken at the point where they try to upgrade their import of cert manager. Yeah, so if we change our go mod file, it won't affect anyone until they upgrade. Yeah, yeah. And don't we just use semantic versioning in our favor then and say we just bump it to version two and jobs are good and way. It's like they know they need to do something because there's a major version change. Hmm. Never, we've never done a major version change. But the, 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 that, 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 that's what it's for, though, right? It's like it's a breaking change. But it would be a bit confusing, wouldn't it? Because the APIs won't change. I mean, the the the, the CRDs. So we kind of we are committed to to the APIs of Cert Manager, but on the goal level, we I think we are saying something that we will uh, make an effort to not break the, the the APIs. I think that's the formulation. And then that's the same as Kubernetes does. They break the, the on the goal level, they break it uh, numerous times. Yeah, no, I, I, get, I get the point. It's not, you're not, the API itself isn't actually changing. So, no. yeah. There's actually no change in the API, and that's kind of what we are committed to do. Well, I mean, there's a difference between Go API and YAML API, right? Yeah. If we go to version two of the Go API, we change all the import parts of our Go modules. They all get this V2 prefix. But then it would be possible to have both version one and version two at the same time in your project, which I, I don't know if that would make any sense. But yeah, it's... Uh, but, but coming back to, to Peter, who is uh, trying to write notes here, uh, can we agree on some kind of requirements or ideas on, on how this solution should look like? I have a feeling that it's preferable to, to keep the API uh, mastery, master files like, like the Go files in the same project as, uh, as the controllers, because if not, it will be a poor developer experience. We could always sync them out as we do with um, the Kubernetes do. So you can, so uh, if you want to import the APIs, you can you import it from another project, but that will only be uh, kind of synced from the from another master. Do you agree that we should keep it in the same project for the, for the developer experience for contributors and maintainers on Cert Manager? I. Again, I don't understand, Eric. Um, 
<laughs> I, I try to make it make it shorter. I mean, imagine you you want to do a change uh, to the API. You want to add a new field, for instance. That means you have to modify the API, of course, uh, and you you probably want to modify the controller as well and some tests and so on. That means the, the, the developer flow will be different if you do it in a separate project, because first you will have to have a pull request in the API project to add the new field. And then you update the dependency from the controller project to the API project where, where the field is present. And then you can start on your PR for the controller changes. But isn't that's why Kubernetes have everything in the staging so that the PR that changes, adds the field and updates the controller can yeah. all be in one PR and then that API gets copied to a new. Exactly. Yeah. So what I'm trying to formulate is kind of a statement saying that the master for the API should be in the controller project so that you can actually achieve a change to the API and to the controller and test in the same PR, yeah. right? That, yeah. So that's, that's yeah, okay, that, that we could write that as a, as a basic yeah. requirement. Yeah. Oh. But the, the result of that is that you cannot import cert manager anymore, okay? Does wow. everyone agree with that? Yeah. Well, you can import it, but you have to add replace statements. Do you mean the, the, the code in PKG and all that? Yeah, so you have to yeah. replace the API with the version API. That's okay, that's okay. That that's depends okay. on how we do it. I mean, if we take the Kubernetes approach to just have staging and then copy it out, there will be no uh, new changes coming into the API project, it will only be a slave of what's done in the in the operator project, right? So it's the same model as Kubernetes. So there, there's never ever done any changes like in the API, Kubernetes API project. It's always just copied out from Kubernetes monorepo. Yeah, but you cannot import Kubernetes without adding replace statements, right? That's what I'm trying to say. So that will be the same for cert match now. I, I, I think someone should fork trust manager and go and try what you think is the best way, and then net, in two weeks' time we'll come back and say this is terrible, <laughs> and this is terrible, and we'll have the same discussion that we're all terrible for different reasons, but there'll be a least bad option. I think the, qu the question is: Is trust manager a good option? Enough. Is it, is it sufficiently like Cert Manager to give us the answers? Because so you would not import Trust Manager just for the sake of its utilities, probably. Yeah, I think that is a an important note because I don't think a lot of people will benefit from importing Trust Manager, and it's because we kind of have these libraries in Cert Manager that you can use to do certs and cert manager related things and you import cert manager for that reason too that we have this problem it's only because of those libraries i think we if you don't fork cert manager, manager no problem. fork cert manager and then update one or two of our projects to use the fork which contains the proposed go mod change see what problems mm. we encounter mm. Yeah. That, that sounds like a good action. So let's fork yeah. cert manager and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. That is an action item. Oh, who wants to do that? Oh, too, too long. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm just uh, hearing the hearing the proposal here for for the area, right? So, uh, I, I I'm just a bit taking a gap from this. So I want to understand how CMCTL is trying to manage this. Uh, is the CMCTL only targeted to cert manager, or is there a plan to get CMCTL work for even the trust manager? Because uh, I'm trying to implement something for um, Rotation of CA certificates, uh, and I would like to do it step by step with CLI rather than automate. And this definitely requires to for me to read CA certificate bundles from Trust Manager, but CMCTL is with me on Cert Manager, right? So, 
um, um, I was about to come to this API question, but I wanted to hear your arguments. But yeah, uh, so my take would be to basically go with kind of a Kubernetes model, though it's not good developer experience, but it would be great to have worsening of these APIs. And it would definitely offload a lot of code from, uh, you know, importing into operator specific changes where you need to access only few APIs rather than the whole set manager bundle. I mean, this is just my few cents, what I can say. Um, I, 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 I like, I think a lot of us think that CMCTL ought to be moved into a separate repository so that it can, so that it can, um, uh, so that it can uh, be useful for all of the cert manager sub projects so i, yep. I agree on that and it, if we did that it would be importing the api module from trust manager and from cert manager so it would be a good it would be a good example of how one might use these separate api packages right so if, if somebody wants to pick it up uh do you think it makes sense to target CMCT to, as a separate project, try to do this? It's, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a can of worms, I'd say. Um, or maybe it wouldn't. You have, this, you have this check API command, right? Maybe we should put that in a separate binary and just have like a check API yeah, binary. That's right. We discussed that, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. And then we don't have any of these cv alerts anymore because of docker and mm -hmm. all that stuff because mm -hmm. we separate all the binaries so that it's only the ctl binary that has a cv alerts but still people are complaining like oh the ctl binaries is vulnerable <laughs> now i'm just saying like oh you can actually use start manager without the C ctl binary just disable the startup webhook and most of them agree that that is a good solution for them um but yeah it would be Cool if we could just have like a binary that only does that because that would make it a bit simpler and i wonder then if we have cmctl in a separate repository would that also import that logic from cert manager how would that work would it import the check api logic from cert manager could it do that without importing all the other stuff from cert manager So yeah, so so it it will be more messy, I think, to break into the utility library. Like you know, you have a separate utility library, and then you have a separate API library. So it's it, like I said, it's too much, too much effort. <laughs> but then it would break most of the things, right? So if you have check APIs, then you, we should be having. Uh, those ah oh, i i understand so, the problem yeah so you could start what's un, un uh uncontroversial is to create the check apis so, uh, separate binary that could be done uh, now couldn't it and that would be the one that would be the one that gets packaged up as a docker image and is the only one that needs to be part of the helm chart so that that would be a good first thing to do, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, and then once that's done, then you would be more. Uh, there would be it would be easier to justify moving CMCTL into a new repository, or just, or just, I guess, just copying the code somewhere, making a new a new repository, which has become the official CMCTL. Source code. All right, that sounds like a, a plan. So we figured out how to do how to move CMCTL out of Cert Manager. Yeah, and then uh, the, to answer the other question, CMCTL. I suppose it, what it could, the, what the binary could do when you run CMCTL check API is actually, instead of 
instead of interacting with the Kubernetes API, it actually deploys a job in Kubernetes, which downloads the, the smaller API checker binary and, and runs the runs the API check as a Kubernetes job. So that you know that inside the Kubernetes cluster, workloads can, in fact, reach the API. Oh, but that's not what CMCTL check API does, right? It's tries. It's not what it does now. It's what I'm suggesting it could do. So you avoid CMCTL having to import all of that logic from Cert Manager. Yeah, but I'm sure there's a lot of other logic that it has to import, like has to import all the conversion internal stuff, I think. No, because it would be the job of the job, which runs the the same API checker that Cert Manager deploys in its Helm chart. Should, should we, anyway, should we yeah. continue this discussion uh, in, yeah. in the regular, regular stand-ups? Um, I, I, Trilok, I, I moved your question next because it's it, it's related. It's good, um, and I think I have a relatively quick answer for you. In that, uh, so you asked if there was a write up about self sign CA rotation. Um, yeah, uh, let, me, let me check out the link. Great, thanks, thanks, Peter. Yeah, and um, you're not the only person to ask. And I remember at least two or three sessions ago, I was going to attempt to write up something as like a standard practice guide for cert manager i just never got around to it it looks like ash has done that uh, in his kubecon talk so and uh, it looks really well put together it's not quite the latest version of trust manager but it's it, it's near enough so um yeah that right. might give you an answer yeah yeah great thanks so ultimately i was also trying to uh, like i said build up cla commands just to you know combine ca certificates Pause the rotation of CA certificate, and that enables you to do manually rotation, right? So, yeah, that's good. Uh, I, I'll just check out. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It, if you happen to get a list together, um, yeah, definitely like to put it somewhere as a as a good reference point. If you, uh, yeah, sure. If you get something that looks good, cool. Thank you. Right. Um, so going on to my next question. So uh, we are trying to support ARM, uh, IBM Power Z systems. So we were looking for if you can have a suggestion on what, what would be the best test cases that I can pull off from the existing ETH. Um, that would be great because we don't seem to have a lot of time around it. <laughs> so we, we thought, OK, we would take your suggestion if you have faced anything around it. Sorry, Trilok. I, I um, oh, are you, have we got the the correct Docker images that you need in Cert Manager? Uh, the right. All right. So, yes, we have got uh, Docker images for OpenShift, and we want to deploy these, and uh, we want to basically validate these builds are working perfectly fine. Right, but we do not have any test script that could be of help for us. Oh, okay. So you can run the end-to-end -end test. You can run a subset of the end-to-end -end tests if you like. Yep. Uh, there's there's um there's actually a make target in Cert Manager to right. to build the end-to-end -end tests as a self-contained binary, um, which you could right. do and then run it against your OpenShift cluster. Right, Tim. The these OpenShift images are they different from our? Like, is it based on this Open this Red Hat um, base image? I think you, no, Richard, uh, no? they are just recompiled for these architectures. So the only thing is the installation is done by the operator, so it's not through Helm charts. So you use our images that are like on this website, right? Um, no. we, Sounds like no. trial. Recompile we build them. images. Yeah, we just recompile from the open source mm -hmm. to the architecture, and then uh, do this. Because we base our images on UBI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to rebuild them. There's no like, is that like open source? Is that like an official thing? 
No, it's an open source UBI image. You, you can directly pull in and you can build them. It's, it's a kind of a, a lightweight uh, base image, you can say. Because Richard, for, for like you, for OLM, you did something similar, right? Or is that not correct? Um, I, uh, I did what? I, I, I uh, in... compiled Cert Manager with this OpenShift base image. No, I You're never right. did that. That that's you yeah, okay. that's uh, that's what you need to do if you want to get the images into the um, Red Hat Enterprise Marketplace, which I didn't want to do. Okay. We used to what, at one point, very early on, when we first created the operator hub support, we thought, or maybe at that time you had to use those images, but then. There's now this community operators catalog, which isn't so strict. I've stopped using those images because they contain a lot of software, so they get easily vulnerable. You need to be really at a high pace of, of, of patching the image. Uh, so in this case, less is more. So I would prefer if we go to a more stripped down image, but well. Yeah, I never understood the rationale for those images. It seems crazy. No. Not for not for a go, not for some software like ours, which is completely self-contained. It's a stripped down version of RHEL. <laughs> mm. See there is like a UBI in its thing or UBI minimal. Is that is there like a, just an empty image? Does that exist? No, not in the yeah. UBI. Yeah. It's not empty. <laughs> it's so, not empty at all. So uh, yeah. Okay. As I said, my personal opinion, we, we started using them because we are also running OpenShift and we're very good friends with Red Hat. But it was causing a lot of trouble, creating big images, a lot of vulnerabilities, uh, a lot of problems. So we, we're just staying away from them at the moment. Yeah, and there's no way to get in that enterprise um, store or, or whatever it's called without using UBI as a base image. I, I I don't know, but uh, well, we could do that. Some some open source uh, project do that just for that reason. So, okay. Um, maybe I can share you. Let me find. This is a Reddit marketplace link of images. But I really don't know how. I think they are basically you know, tuned for marketplace. So they are mostly carrying rail packages. And the architecture that you're looking for, what's like the short? Uh, yeah, uh, so we, we are, yeah, so we are uh, going for ARM, ARM64. OK. And then IBM's power and Z systems. And the so we, power MZ systems, what's like the the short, if you look on Docker, what's like the short name for that? It's 64 or something. Ah, OK. So we have those two images on like the non-UBI. We have the non-UBI version right. of that, right? Okay. Right, right. So we do have it uh, upstream. And the only thing is we, uh, it's, it's not uh, recommended that it's a kind of a tested are validated images, right? So, so on upstream, we do not guarantee that it's tested. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. So if we can get that guarantee on the upstream, then we don't have to do the rebuild and things like that, so. Oh, so you want to test our images? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I can do uh, either test your images or test OpenShift images. So for now, we really don't know to set up our testing pipeline. Uh, we don't have images, right? So even if you want to test, set up this test pipeline, we need to know what test cases we can pull in because we don't want to keep on uh, doing the same test that we run for 64, unless it's a platform specific. Right. So yeah. am I making any sense here? <laughs> so. um. Now I'm starting to, to kind of lose you. So I think Richard okay. just mentioned that you can compile our test and then run it on right. your... Right, to make it to me, yes. Got it. And that's what you're yeah. doing. 
this is what we are doing currently, right? So we want to see, are there any platform specific tests that you want to suggest that it should be run on these systems? If there are no ex extra GUI or any platform specific that you are aware of, then it's okay. Well, I, I would, um, I, I, I run um, package. I, I, I run the only, I, I only run the CA issuer tests okay. because all the other tests require some um, extra software installed in the cluster. Mm -hmm. Ideally, I would have another script which installed like there's, there's a let's encrypt simulator called Pebble. And if I installed that in the class in the OpenShift cluster, I could run the let's encrypt end-to-end -end tests and that would help me know that the um the uh what's it called the, the acme solver image is also working correctly so yes try trilock if you could do that if you could install pebble or maybe there's a way to configure the uh, uh, the end-to-end -end tests to, to use let's in the real let's encrypt then that would be an even better set of end-to-end -end tests I'm not sure if it's possible, though. Yeah. I, I think right now we don't test these platforms, right? We only test MD64. Yeah, I think that's we only that's right. The end-to-end -end tests run so only in We definitely don't test it on on uh, OpenShift, then, because we don't even test it on plain Kubernetes. No worries. Uh, because we be... were getting few CVEs, uh, which are platform specific, and that would require bumping uh, cryptographic libraries. And yeah, I, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on how our tests go. So, couldn't we add that architecture of yours to our default set of multi arch images, Trilock? So I, I think it's already there. there. Yeah. Oh, have I, missed, have I missed the conversation? Why are you then rebuilding the images? Oh, like I said, it's only for getting it on to the OpenShift marketplace. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. I missed, sorry, I was, I'm hopeless. I was concentrating on something else. So you are creating marketplace images, right? Yeah. Under what uh, organization name, though? Uh, is that who do you it's, do it's that for? And you... it's it's an OpenShift. It's an OpenShift organization. Oh, are you working for? So I, I'm. I... Yeah, sorry. I work Great. for. Got <laughs> right, got it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> are you working on the Red Hat operator? Um, yes. Okay, right. Cool. Do we historically have any uh, issues with uh, different architectures and I don't know, those things? Does anyone know? No. We haven't had a lot of complaints, I think. Maybe it's because they're not used or maybe it's because they there are no problems. <laughs> I know James and various JetStack people used to run the cert manager on uh, Raspberry Pi clusters. I assume ARM64 is used uh, quite a bit. I'm going to have to disappear because um, the office is closing. Uh, nice to see you all, and uh, I'll catch you later. I have one. I have one more question for you, uh, Trilog. What versions of the official, let's say, official cert manager um, images are you testing on Red Hat right now? On Red Hat uh, uh, OpenShift. We are uh, one release lesser from the upstream. So currently, we are going to GA with one twelve four. Which is under mm -hmm. test, and I think it should be out in another two, three weeks. And this is supported on multiple versions of OpenShift. So the same sort of manager version, like 1.12.4, will be supported on 4.14, 4.13, and 4.12. So we have this support lifecycle that we do. And any issues that we find, we uh, definitely. Uh, have more issues on the operator side, but not on exactly the search manager side. So, okay. 
And these are all OBI versions of the image. Yeah, UBI they're based version. on yeah, they're based on UBI and internally it's it's an uh, open question. I mean, like you can you can make a choice of the images that you want to build in, but UBI and RHEL are security certified kind of things, right? So we don't want to do again on any other distribution, right? Mm. And that's one of the reasons we stick with UBI. Plus, it works uh, very good with Irish costs. Because I was wondering, can we like on the Circuit Manager website, can we advertise that we do tests Cert Manager against certs and OpenShift first, like that we have certs and um, versions that we um, know are working? I'm not sure about the advertisement. I, I would definitely would come back to you on that. Uh, but meanwhile, if you want to prefer, there's already a, a Red Hat official support cycle page which mentions uh, as Cert Manager as a supported product on, on the OpenShift, you can definitely have a link to it. Mm -hmm. right, so if you want, uh, let me check. So Eric, for example, you, you are running the open source images, right? On Open yeah, it, it's a bit of a, an historical uh, thing because uh, when we uh, started using Cert Manager, uh, we needed some new features uh, into Cert Manager. Uh, so, in order to kind of get those fast into our clusters, we we used the the open source version. Uh, and I'm not convinced that we would go for the uh, supported the OpenShift Marketplace edition uh, anyway because we, we tend to have issues with uh, customizing them if we have some something we want to configure. It's been a, a, a repeating problem. But I, I want to use this meeting to kind of describe all the problems, but um, we're using OpenShift and it works pretty, it works very well. It, it's a good product, but there, there are some things that uh, I personally don't, don't like that much. And do you have to pay for uh, support? From Red Hat, on top of yeah, it, it, it comes it comes with the subscription, right? So it's not like per product or anything. So it's kind of full package. Oh, okay, okay. Hmm. So it's included in the OCP, is it? Uh, it's a secondary operator, so it's not a, like a base package. Okay. So any customer can directly download and use it. So if any customer buys, I think. Uh, subscription package for OCP. So anything add-ons that are coming up and getting installed, they're also supported. Cool. So there's nothing like separated out only for certain major kind of things, nothing like that. You don't need OpenShift Enterprise to, to, to get support on this or? But this is only uh, for the enterprise. So okay. if, you, if you really want to directly use it, uh, so you can still uh, basically install uh, OCP and you can download it, but you cannot come back to Red Hat saying that I have a work. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. And if someone you has problems with, with, if someone has problems with like certain man directly, do, do they directly ask you or do they, do you not support that kind of problem? Do you only support operator related problems? I know we, su we support everything. So, when we see if there is a problem in the search managers repository, so we come back to the upstream and we do development on the upstream and we take a guess on what version it will be back and then we can get back to the customer saying that, okay, this is the version that the upstream is following and this is where it will come to you. Okay. But yeah. we, we really avoid doing any changes on downstream or anything, maintaining our own things. <laughs> we really don't want to do that. Yeah, I mean, we are working on this governance document um, to also like make it easier for external people to contribute, but also become maintainer and so on. So you mm -hmm. find that you're making a lot of change to cert manager and requiring a lot of stuff to be changed to cert manager want to play a bigger role there, then that's definitely something you can look into. It's kind of, mm -hmm. I think this will definitely prevent 
some kind of uh, upstream downstream separation where you have like a ton of matches downstream they don't get upstream yes. no if you through this process we want to get these people that are using cert manager to also contribute upstream so definitely, yes, definitely. check it out it's, yeah so, uh, so what what you're mentioning now is uh, you can have a look at this so this is our downstream so what we do is we pick only the version that we are going to release rather than have everything from the upstream and as you can see there are no specific patches or anything that's there online right so we definitely strive to bring all the changes from the upstream <laughs> that's great yeah okay that's good to know that how you work and how that's uh, organized. Yeah, it, it, yeah, great. It, it's been on recording, so I, I'm I'm a little bit scared because it's kind of function <laughs> statement. <laughs> it's it's been very very interesting for me as well, since we use OpenShift and kind of can choose how to install things. So you can you can definitely try it OKD. Yeah. That, mm. That's the recent thing, and we are trying to drive it uh, something like CentOS. So OKD is for the OpenShift. So you guys can get a hands-on, you can build images, you can try it out. And that since it's open and anybody can contribute out there, so it's uh, we can use it definitely for um, your slides and anything. So there's no much difference from OKD and OpenShift, just like Corel and CentOS. So. Mm -hmm. Should we move over to... Peter Swinter, do we have we run out of time? I, yeah, I, I need to go. So I'm going to suggest I just I cover this next time. Um, but I could give a very quick summary just for reference in case people want to. Um, the the issue in hand that I made I made a comment that uh, I'm not a maintainer. Um, I probably should add that to the comment. Um, but I suggested that we actually don't do any work on presets because I found with Caverno it's very easy to do this defaulting. It even works with Ingress Shim. So it's it's kind of the solution's already there and works in my mind. And I've kind of come from full circle on this from thinking this is an important issue. We should do something. It sounds like it's a lot of work compared to just doing this other thing. So um I'm updating my tutorial uh, to include the ingress in bit. Uh, it's nearly there, um, but I think it would be good to do something with the issue in the near future and explain like why. Uh, there are other ways to do this, right? You template outside of um, outside of Kubernetes, and you could do defaulting there, and you could do it in cluster with policy. Um, yeah, it's. Tim, sorry, go on. Well, so what you're saying basically is we shouldn't add a new feature to Cert Manager that does certificate templating for you. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Is that we should use Kiverno I, as, a, I'm, like as a Cert Manager user? I'm saying it's a good enough workaround and easy enough that it doesn't make sense to spend time doing this when there's better things that could be done. Probably better things that could be done in Cert Manager um, overall. Um, there was a comment that some things are like issuer specific and that maybe some things could be set on an issuer. And I do kind of agree, but I think it's kind of a bigger change. Um, and again, you can set those things with other ways, right? So I I think Tim, with your work on the configuration file, for serve manager that might open up a better way to at least make a cluster level default for for these things um, and that might be a better path forward but i think the idea of doing it as as an admission hook which is the original thing in the um admission resource in the uh, in the issue i think that that's done better by other tools now because the issue was opened what four years ago so uh, just for the record, um, it's not me. Like I refute it, but the oh. um, version configuration file was created by Cody, I think. Yes, hope that hope I recall that correctly. Yes, Cody, um, someone from VMware. 
hopefully I'm not uh, creating some kind of dispute here in the call. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. He, he created that uh, uh, config file and I did some reviewing on that. But yeah, indeed, that's a very cool feature. But what I think we should do is we should put it on the website and Rich and I, we already talked about maybe adding like a top level menu about policy and we could like have defaulting policies and validation policies in there. And like a proof of policy would be one of the examples for validation policy. A defaulting policy could be something that's um, explained through Kiverno, for example. I don't think we should only talk about our own products, but also talk about like how to use this properly, Cert Manager. Yeah. Are you aware that Quiverno has a big catalog of, of uh, example policies? Uh, there is at the moment only one for Cert Manager. We could uh, try to contribute some more of it. I, I know they're very eager to get new ex uh, new examples in there that could be useful for users. Mm -hmm. I think it could be a very powerful kind of setup where you have this totally figured out, your Quiverno setup, and then you yeah it's it it starts to get into the realms of what how do you run your cluster do you run it it's like a one tenant per cluster or multiple multiple tenants in one cluster and kind of like the best practice changes at that point between what resources you apply but like the rules might be vaguely similar but then then the rules are you set this value and then you go actually no i want to i want to override that value so we can set some examples but they are examples yeah. you still need to copy them and manipulate them to your uh preferences i think i mean if your if your company is large enough you will definitely not use the examples and create your own <laughs> yeah but, but uh, a good, a good reference to, to show what's possible yeah indeed. yeah cool um so I, I have to go so i still some things in progress but i the, when i did comment on that some people did mention ingressim which is why i'm adding ingressim to the uh, tutorial as well because I don't think it's a valid enough use case, but I think the issue has been open long enough that in the past, other issues have been closed going, this will solve it. And I've come along and not known any of that and kind of said, I don't think we should do this. And I go, well, what about Ingresham? So uh, I want to make sure I've covered that use case as like a valid concern as well. Um, but yeah. It... Have you looked at CL at, at Mission Webhooks? That... Instead once I get, room. once I got this pit out of the way, that's like the next thing because I need a one twenty eight time cluster, which is easy to do, but then I need to start playing with it a bit. So, um, yes, that's that is another idea that could be better for the future as well, as in no external dependency required, which would also solve the other issue of people going, well, what if I can't install another tool? I'll do this then. That could help. Yeah. Defaulting is available in one twenty eight, isn't it? So. Or is it still not a part of Kubernetes? You know, it's it's just the validating with yeah. Cell. It, um, I was trying to find the link to a mutating CEL, but I, I couldn't see anything yet. But I think it's in the making, so it's uh, it's it, it's coming. <laughs> is that done like a Kiverno killer, or um, how does that work? It will kill some of the things you, you typically use Kiverno for because uh, it would be very nice to not have to install something extra to, to do this. Uh, you could say the same thing about Cert Manager. I've suggested to James a long time ago uh, issuing certificates to webhooks should be part of Kubernetes. So, because there's like, I've seen at least 30 different solutions for obtaining a certificate to your webhook in uh, different projects that don't want to have a dependency on Cert Manager. <laughs> well, Cert Manager itself also doesn't have a dependency on self, so we also have our own mechanism for creating webhook certificates. Yeah. Which isn't maybe the most beautiful thing, but it's hard to find a good solution for that. Mm. And actually also found that in Trust Manager, maybe we didn't want to rely on Insert manager. So there, we also changed recently how we do this. Well, we, did, we didn't change it. We added like a default policy to create these webhook certificates in Trust Manager. Mm. 
it would be good to have it in in Cert Manager and uh, Kubernetes, I think. Oh yeah, it would be wonderful. But uh, I don't think that's ever going to happen because uh, they seem to throw things out of the uh, of Kubernetes instead of taking new things in. <laughs> Maybe if they support like the because you have like um, you have Kubernetes certificate resources, right? Right, uh, certificate signing resources. Mm. Certificate signing request resources. If they somehow automatically generated those based on some kind of webhook and then automatically trusted those resources, then we just have to sign those resources. And that's something we can do easily as um, cert manager, I think. There has been some work lately on the trust side in upstream Kubernetes. Um, so there might come something. I don't know what where that's going to end. But but currently, I understand this internal certificate signing request to be more like for internal operations in the cluster to kind of bootstrap things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should we stop the recording? Are we done for today? Yes.